So I was cruising through the swap meet, walked right by this radio, and then I heard a person say, Hey buddy, can I interest you in an air castle? Air castle? Slowly I turned, step by step, inch by inch, slipped it by Marcia and put it in the Hamgen. So now it's time to revive it here, Saturday night, at D-Lab Electronics. All right, so what do we have here besides a Cookie Monster and a bottle of Columbia Crest wine? We have a Air Castle Model 5009 little wood tabletop radio. Here's the symptom. Plug him in. Nothing happens. She is completely dead. So what do you do about a dead radio? Get inside and see what killed it. I've already taken the clips off so we can see in the back of this guy. There are some tubes in it, right? So let me zoom in. I'm going to plug it in. Kill the shop lights. And guess what? There's nothing glowing in the dark. She is dead. Now remember, this is a hot chassis radio, so there's no power transformer. So the filaments of the tubes add up to your line voltage. So if all the tubes are good, they should be lighting. At least if their filaments are good, you would see that. Well, here's the schematic on the little Air Castle 5009. Now, if you look here, you'll see your line cord coming in. And one leg of the line cord goes up here and goes in series with all the tube filaments. So if you were to add up all these filament voltages, 35, 35, 12, 12, 12, whatever, it would equal close to what your line voltage is coming into the radio. And that's how they lit all the tubes. So if one filament opens, it's the old Christmas tree effect. Lights out. So we more than likely have one tube out there with a bad filament. Let's go take a look. So make sure that your radio is unplugged because we're going to ohm out the filaments on all the tubes. Okay? So your line cord comes in here, comes up to the first tube. So from here to here, you should see the filaments. There it is, 30 ohms. Now from there, it takes off over to this tube. You can kind of follow this wiring. It's pretty self-explanatory. So it goes there. And from there, I believe it exits. Nope, it's up here. 32 ohms. Okay. And from that wire, it zings over here. There it is. And from there, it goes to here. Uh-oh. Yeah. Guess what? This filament's open. Okay, so we're going to keep going though. So from here, come down to this tube, right? You should see that filament, and we do. And from there, comes to this tube, right? And then from there to there, there's the other filament. So all these guys are good. That guy right there, it's got an open filament. And what is that tube? All right, I found one. It's been replaced. So now we'll go right back to that tube. And looky there. We have continuity cross filament. Now, now that it looks like our filament circuit is complete, if we go across the line cord, assuming your power switch is on, you should see the total resistance of all the filaments. And there it is, about 114.6 ohms. So my guess is we plug this guy in, it's going to light up. All right, here we go, smoke test. Killing the lights here in the shop. So we can see if there's any smoke or fire. I'm plugging it in. Look at there, idiot lights on. Now I put the knobs on, because remember, this is a hot chassis radio. I really don't feel like getting blasted. Let's just see if we get anything out of it. Oh yeah. But the volume's all the way down. Hear the hum? Yep. She's playing but highly distorted because of that hum. And that 
is Mr. Filter Cap. Let's kill it and put in a new filter cap. That seems to be the common uh, theme with these old radios, doesn't it? So here's the main filter cap, okay? She's got a 50 microfarad section, a 30 and a 20, all at 150 volts, okay? Let's take a look under side. Yep, a lot of old drippy wax caps. Look at that guy. The end, get it where you can see it. The end is blown right out of the back of that cap, right? So yeah, there's some crusty guys in here. But first thing we're going to do is change the main filter cap. So I'm sure you're saying to yourself, to buy a replacement filter cap like that, it'd probably be as much as what the whole radio is worth. That is true. So what I'm going to do, if you were to take a little ruler and measure this, you can see that that cap is approximately one inch in diameter, which happens to be the same size as the base of this tube socket. Okay? You guys have seen this trick before. I take individual caps, I drill holes out where the pins exit from the tube socket, bring the leads through, solder them, and I put this socket in the hole where this cap is mounted. So that is what we're going to do. This is going to replace that. Here are the sections. So you can see we have the three section cap. Got a 33, a 22, and a 68 microfarad. And I identified the pin locations where we're going to hook up when we connect it into the radio. Just like you see me do in other videos, I'm going to clip these wires off close to the cap so we know what wires went where. We'll use these leads to connect to our new capacitor assembly. So the old mount on this is some very thin brass. So she'll come right off the chassis pretty easily. I need to drill out these pop rivets because those holes will be used for the new tube socket. I'm going to carefully drill out these old pop rivets. I got the pop rivets out. Here's the new tube socket. It seats in there fine, but the holes don't quite line up. They're a little bit off. So I guess what I'll do is go ahead and rotate this guy and re-drill and put him some new pop rivets. Alright, got the new holes drilled. Get this guy pop riveted in. There's a cap sitting on the tube socket. Now if we go bottom side, you see the wiring is simply folded over in the holes. So we'll solder those. Double check it against our diagram. Get her hooked up. All right, we're getting ready to solder the terminals on the bottom of the tube socket. Here's our diagram. So two, four, and six are negatives. So I've got a jumper going from two, four, and six. So we're going to connect all those together. And then we're going to hook up the original black ground wire that was used when the radio was constructed. All right, she's soldered in. So let's just grab her little diagram here. According to my diagram, this is pin one. Should be about a 33 microfarad. Now remember, this is in circuit, so this can be different. Two's ground. Three should have been the 22. And then four, five, six is negative, and seven is the 68. So yep, caps are on there, wired up. Let's bring her up slow on a variac and see if the hum's gone. All right, so I got my Tenma isolated variac here. Bring him up. There's about 50 volts. The light's on. So you see it's isolation transformer, so this is safe to run hot chassis radios on. It's really a great little variac. If you guys find one of these on the used market, I'd highly suggest you get it. It's the Tenma model 721095. Hey, we got some life over here. It's about 100 volts. You turn the volume all the way down. No hum. Good sign. Alright. 
She's working. Excellent. That's what I need to see. Now let's get in there and get those ugly wax caps out. So I almost forgot. After the caps are in, it's wired and everything's cool. Pop a little heat shrink over that assembly. Pretty it up. Alright, same as in some of the last videos. Pretty much going to clip these guys out. Look at that guy. Man, that thing is in rough shape. And I'm going to replace it with some of these Panasonic type. And I have a couple uh, spray orange drops. So you can see you've got quite the span between these old leads. The new cap will make it. But to do that, I'm going to take an X-Acto. I'm going to clean these other leads up. Get any corrosion off of them. You're going to put a little J-hook in those leads. So we're going to hook these guys together. That will give you a mechanical connection. And then you'll solder them. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing this. It'll give you a good secure connection. I've had some of you that say, hey, we want to see you actually do it. Well, here it is. Okay, they're in. Stay out of your way. You know, I'd use a megaton of solder. Just wait till you see the solder moving, you're good. Done. All right, there we go. All the new caps are installed. Let's power it back up and give her a final check. All right, since we've already powered it up with a Variac, I'm going to go ahead and plug her right in. So I got the plastic knobs back on because we're back in hot chassis mode. We have to know if it can handle it, the line right here. Look at there. Alright. Not too many stations in my area. Might be one or two. Oh, there's another. Anyway. She's a working. So I always take a little bit of deox to the cap. Try to avoid any noise and dropouts. Here she is with the lights dimmed. What a cool dial that thing has, huh? Air castle lit right up. Great project. All right, another old radio saved from the dump here at D-Lab Electronics. I took some time off to do this because I wanted to have a little bit of fun. I'll be back into the repairs later. So, so long from D-Lab and Columbia Crest Wine. D-Lab's rocking the tube world. You like what you see? Subscribe, like me.